Let's talk about the properties of 3D print material. As we mentioned in section 8.1, 3D print material is technically a type of mortar because it does not contain large pieces of crushed rock, stone, or gravel aggregate, as is the case with traditional ready mix concrete. The primary aggregate used in 3D print material is sand, which can account for more than half of the total dry mix volume. 3D print material is most similar to a dry mortar mix, comparable to that which is used for plastering or flooring. These fine grain materials are produced differently than regular concrete, and thus cannot be produced in the same type of factories. The main components of 3D print material are cement, which is used as a binding agent, sand, which is used as a filler, and a list of additives, which typically account for 10 to 15 percent of the mix design, but they play a leading role in making the material suitable for 3D printing. 3D print material design is a complex science, and there are a variety of different additives which can be used to achieve similar results. Most 3D printing companies have developed their own proprietary mix designs, some of which are good, while others have had to compromise on things like compressive strength or crack resistance in order to maintain an extrudable mix design. We at Oppies Corp have invested heavily in developing a high-performance print material without compromise, and we are one of the only companies that has published third-party ASTM-compliant engineering tests on our 3D print material. These can be found on the NFPA's website. We obviously cannot disclose our proprietary mix design publicly, but we can say that it does not include any prohibited or toxic chemicals. All of the components used in our print material design are materials that are commonly used in construction. They're safe and they're readily available on the open market. These additives, the proportions in which they are used, and the method by which they are combined enables our mix to achieve the three essential characteristics of 3D print material. These properties are extrudability, short flow time, and durability. Extrudability and short flow time are important characteristics before the material has set and hardened, and durability is an important characteristic after the material has cured. Let's start by talking about extrudability. As you may have guessed, the term extrudability means that the material has the ability to be easily and consistently extruded out of the print nozzle. There are three primary factors that contribute to a 3D print material's extrudability. The first factor which contributes to the extrudability of 3D print material is viscosity. Viscosity is the state of being thick sticky and semi-fluid in consistency due to internal friction. For example, molasses and tar have a high viscosity because they're sticky and do not flow freely, whereas water or gasoline are said to have low viscosities because they're very runny and flow freely with very little friction. With 3D print material, viscosity is primarily a function of water dosage. As you add more water to the dry mix mortar, the material will become less viscous and will flow more easily, whereas if you add less water, the material becomes more viscous. Traditional concrete has a much lower viscosity than 3D print material, which enables it to flow freely under the force of gravity. This is great when you're pouring a slab or grouting a wall cavity, but if you try to use the same concrete to print a house, you won't end up with walls. You'll end up with a puddle. On the other hand, you could try adding less water to the mix to give the material a higher viscosity, but it's easy to make the material too viscous, which will cause the material to clog in the hose lines and damage the printer. This means there's a balancing act between low viscosity material, which is too wet to support its own weight, and high viscosity material, which is too dry and sticky to move through the hose lines. You may be thinking, okay, I'll add the correct amount of water and the material should be perfect. But this is easier said than done, because even a 3% difference in water volume can mean the difference between printing a puddle and breaking your machine. However, water is not the only ingredient that can have an impact 
on the viscosity of 3D print material. Plasticizers and superplasticizers are common types of additives, or admixtures, which can be used to lower the viscosity of mortar while increasing its workability, plasticity, and performance. Plasticizers are but one of many types of admixtures which enable 3D printed mortar to have a lower water content while maintaining the same viscosity, each with their own unique features and chemical properties. Most 3D printed mortars contain a proprietary blend of several different additives, all of which will interact with one another on a molecular level to achieve the desired characteristics. This creates a delicate balance where too much or too little of any one additive can have a significant impact on the overall performance of the material. Another factor that impacts a print material's viscosity is a property called thixotropy. Thixotropy is defined as the property of becoming less viscous when subject to applied stress. For example, this sample of aggregate-rich concrete has a very high viscosity and appears to be virtually immobile, but look what happens when the mixture is subjected to the force created by a concrete vibrator. The concrete instantly becomes less viscous and appears to liquefy as trapped air bubbles are released from the sample. Once the pressure of vibration stops, the material reverts back to its high viscosity state very quickly. Thixotropy is an essential property for a 3D print material because the material must be able to flow through the hose lines while under pressure, but once it leaves the extruding nozzle and is no longer under pressure, the print material must be able to retain its shape and not slump or deform under the force of gravity. In this video, you can see an example of 3D print material which is not exhibiting good thixotropic properties. The material flows through the hose lines quite easily, but once it leaves the extruder and the pressure is released, it's unable to rapidly increase viscosity and retain its shape. When we talk about printing a puddle instead of printing a building, this is what we're referring to. The second factor which affects extrudability is pumpability. As the name suggests, pumpability refers to the material's ability to be mechanically pumped throughout the system without the use of manual labor. For this fully automated solution to be achieved, the material must be pumpable both when it is in its dry state before water has been introduced into the mix, and it must also be pumpable after the material has been mixed with water. When the material arrives on site, it's still in a dry powder state and must be loaded into the mixing system where water can be added into the mixture. It is essential that the mix remains completely dry while it is being transported to the site, while it's being stored, and while it's being transferred into the mixing machine. This is because water will cause the mixture to become sticky and then quickly harden. As you'll see in Chapter 9, this is why OpiScore uses a smart bulk truck to transport, store, and pneumatically pump the dry 3D print material into this intelligent self-cleaning mixing system. The pneumatic pumpability of the dry 3D print material enables hands-free automatic loading of the dry material, and it ensures the material is kept in a vacuum-sealed container and protected from environmental contaminants from the time it's mixed at the batch plant to the time it's left the extruder. The third factor which affects extrudability and pumpability is aggregate size. Large pieces of aggregate are used in conventional ready-mix concrete and have a tendency to bind together and clog in the hose lines, which is a major problem if you're looking for consistent material extrusion, which of course you are. These large pieces of aggregate are also too large to fit through the progressive cavity pump which is a device that is used to continuously and reliably pump the liquid print material throughout the system. This is because cavity pumps transfer liquid by rotating a helical screw rotor inside of a ribbed flexible housing called a stator. As the helical screw rotates, it creates cavities between the rotor and the stator, which shrink and expand to force the viscous print material through the system at very precise rates. 
large aggregates are unable to pass through these narrow cavities because they would shred and damage this flexible stator, which would render the pump useless. Even if large chunks of aggregate could pass through the cavity pumps in the hose lines, they would still not be suitable for use in 3D print material because the large chunks would create inconsistencies in the print layers. For example, in this video, you can see that the larger pieces of limestone aggregate are quite visible and will need to be manually smoothed out after the pour is complete in order to create a smooth finished surface. When poured inside of a wall cavity, you can see that using ready mix concrete with large pieces of aggregate can trap air bubbles which remain once the concrete is cured. These air bubbles prevent the concrete from consolidating which weakens the structural integrity of the finished concrete. This is why it's common practice to use a concrete vibrator to release all of these trapped air bubbles. However, vibration is not necessary after extruding 3D printed mortar because the fine sand aggregate and consistent mixing process prevent air bubbles from becoming trapped within the material in the first place. Moving on to the second essential characteristic of 3D print material, short flow time. To understand what this means, it's important to understand the difference between flow time, the setting time, and the cure time. Flow time begins just after the material has been mixed with water, and it ends once the material has lost its flowability and has become rigid enough to support its own weight and the weight of the next print layer above without slumping or deforming under the force of gravity. As the flow time progresses, the 3D print material paste begins increasing in viscosity while losing its plasticity, but should still be tacky enough to fully and completely bind to the previous layer and the infill material. Flowability is an important characteristic of 3D print material because, unlike masonry mortar, which is typically mixed in a bucket and then scooped with a trowel and applied by hand, 3D printed mortar must be able to flow through the hose lines without clogging or separating. However, it's absolutely essential for that free-flowing 3D print material to abruptly stop flowing and quickly transition into a 3D printed layer that can retain its shape without slumping or deforming under the force of gravity. Thanks to the material's thixotropic properties, the transition from being inside the pressurized hose lines to being extruded out into the depressurized outdoor environment helps make this abrupt transition possible. The end of the flow time marks the beginning of the setting time. The setting time begins once the material has already adhered to the adjoining layers and ends once the 3D printed mortar has completely lost its plasticity and is fully hard to the touch. It's important for initial setting time to begin rapidly after the flow time ends because each subsequent layer adds additional weight to the layers below, which will deform if the rate of extrusion outpaces the rate of setting. Once the setting time ends, the curing time begins. But we'll talk more about curing time when we discuss durability in a minute. The rate at which setting occurs can be controlled by another type of admixture called accelerants or accelerators. These accelerants are a catalyst that speeds up the chemical process of hydration, thereby causing the curing period to begin sooner. Most all 3D printed mortars contain some form of accelerant, but the type and ratio of accelerants used can be adjusted for better performance in more extreme climates, for different extrusion rates, and even for different types of architectural forms. However, some accelerants can cause cracking and weaken the integrity of cured 3D print material, and others can even release chemicals that can corrode steel and damage the reinforcement within the 3D printed wall system. It's even possible for some accelerants that would otherwise perform well to have an adverse reaction with a completely different admixture, which can have unintended consequences that weaken the integrity of the 3D printed wall system. This is why creating 3D printed mortar is best left to the chemical engineers and the material scientists who have dedicated their lives to mastering the subject. Another factor which can influence the setting time of 3D printed mortar is the temperature of the environment in which the building is being printed. 
As we discussed in section 8.3, high temperatures speed up the rate of hydration, setting time, and strength development. The opposite occurs when the temperature is lower. A good rule of thumb is that for every 50 degrees Fahrenheit change in temperature, the rate of hydration is changed by a factor of two. For example, an increase in temperature from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit will double the rate of hydration. This means that 3D printed mortar will take a longer time to set and cure in colder temperatures and will cure more quickly on a hot sunny day. There are some admixtures which can reduce temperature's effect on the rate of hydration. These admixtures enable 3D printed mortar to perform well in a broader range of temperatures, but this is not a fix-all solution, especially when operating in temperatures below freezing. Most all cement-based concretes and mortars should be protected from freezing before reaching a minimum compressive strength of 500 PSI. But there are some additives for 3D printed mortar which can even enable the material to perform well in freezing conditions. Nonetheless, it is important to use a mortar that is specifically designed to perform well in your specific operating environment. The third essential characteristic of construction 3D print material is durability. Now, I promised you that we'd talk more about the cure time, so let's start here. When the material's final setting time ends, the curing time begins. But the curing process takes significantly longer, and technically speaking, concrete and mortar never stop curing. In fact, 3D printed mortar will continue getting stronger and stronger throughout the material's usable lifespan. But to reach a practical strength, most industrial concrete mixes in 3D printed mortars have a seven day curing period to achieve 70% of their compressive strength, and a 28 day curing period at which point they've achieved approximately 80% of their full compressive strength. Curing is defined as providing adequate moisture, temperature, and time to allow the material to achieve the desired properties for its intended use. Properly cured concrete has an adequate amount of moisture for continued hydration and strength development, volume stability, resistance to freezing and thawing, and abrasion and scaling resistance. The length of adequate curing time is dependent on five main factors. One, mixed portions. Two, specified strength. Three, size and shape of the 3D printed member. Four, ambient weather conditions. And five, future exposure conditions. With traditional ready mix concrete, it's important to treat the concrete while it's curing to prevent the mixing water from quickly evaporating and to ensure proper strength development. These curing treatments include things like ponding and immersion, covering the concrete with impervious paper or plastic sheets, applying membrane forming curing compounds, spreading and fogging, keeping saturated wet coverings on top of the concrete, and many other solutions, all of which add cost. However, Oppie's Core's 3D print material contains special additives in a proprietary mix design which controls the rate at which the mixing water can evaporate from the material. So these costly and time-consuming curing treatments are typically not necessary with our material. One of the most popular metrics used to define the strength of a material like concrete or 3D printed mortar is the net area compressive strength. If you've ever tried to research other companies' engineering test reports for their 3D printed material, then you probably know that the information isn't exactly widely available. Sure, you may find some general claims of 2, 4, or even 6,000 PSI compressive strengths, but who performed these tests? Which ASTM standards were followed? Were these cylindrical concrete specimens, or were they actually 3D printed wall samples? Is that number the 28-day compressive strength, or is it some estimated projection for how strong the material could potentially be after a year of curing? Were the samples grouted or reinforced? Sure, a 6,000 PSI compressive strength sounds great, 
But will any of those 3D printed walls actually support 6,000 PSI? If compressive strength is something you care about, then these are important questions. We publish third-party engineering tests on our standard 3D print material because it's important for architects, engineers, and anyone else who plans on using our material to have access to this information and to feel confident that the material will perform as marketed. Oppie's Core's 3D printed wall samples were tested by Briggs Engineering and Testing per ASTM C1314, and as you should remember from chapter three and four, they achieved a net area compressive strength of 2,640 PSI. That's for actual extruded CMU style wall samples, not cylindrical concrete specimens. Briggs also tested multiple of our cylindrical concrete specimens per ASTM C39, and these achieved an average compressive strength of 3,627 PSI, which is almost 1,000 PSI greater than the extruded wall samples. We could advertise the higher compressive strength from the lab-tested cylinders, and that's exactly what most companies would do but we choose to advertise the lower number from the extruded wall samples because it still far exceeds the 2,000 PSI requirements for CMU construction. Sure, the over 3,600 PSI cylinder tests may look better for marketing, but you aren't building a house made of cylinder specimens. You're 3D printing walls. So we believe the honest choice is to advertise the specs for the actual product that you'll receive. To that point, Compressive strength isn't the only measure of strength for 3D printed mortar. Flexural strength is the stress at failure in bending. The three-point flexural test is used to determine flexural strength, and it's an important test to prove that the 3D printed layers completely adhere and bind to each other so that they don't form cold joints in between the 3D printed layers. A cold joint is a plane of weakness in concrete caused by an interruption or delay in the concreting operations. For example, when pouring a concrete column, a cold joint can occur when the first batch of concrete has begun to set before the next batch is added so that the two batches do not intermix. As you can see here, this test is performed by comparing the flexural performance of 3D printed samples which were extruded in layers versus samples of the same material that were poured into formwork and cast into a solid member without any layers. Our extruded 3D printed wall samples were tested by the Advanced Cementus Materials and Composites Laboratory per ASTM C293 and C293M, which determined that the uniform brake pattern and comparable braking force indicates that Oppie's Core's 3D printed wall samples have excellent layer adhesion and do not contain cold joints. Another characteristic associated with the durability of 3D printed mortars is the ability to resist cracking. Fiber reinforcement is a common additive in conventional ready mix concrete, which is used to reduce the size and prevent the spread of cracks after they begin to form. These tiny hair-like fibers work well with traditional poured concrete, but in our experience, they have a tendency to bind together and create small blemishes and inconsistencies when used in 3D printed mortar. Fiber reinforcement can also affect the flowability of 3D printed mortar and make it more difficult for the high viscosity material to flow through the hose lines, which can increase the likelihood that clogging will occur. It's possible that some types of fiber reinforcement may help to resist cracking, but that doesn't necessarily mean that fiber reinforcement is the best solution for 3D printed mortar. Oppie's Core's proprietary mix design includes special additives which provide superior crack resistance without creating blemishes, inconsistencies, or clogging. Achieving the proper characteristics of 3D print materials is a complex science and is made possible through proper mix design, rigorous testing, and a high standard of quality control. We've hired some of the best and brightest who have dedicated more than half a decade to develop and test our standard material design. But as you'll see in the next section, the best is yet to come.